Okay, so I just want to go over how to upload your documents to command, essentially. Um, so let me get command over here for you. Okay, so um, this is what you do when you have a listing or have a buyer or you basically have any paperwork signed um, and ready to submit it to the office. So uh, in command, you're going to go to the opportunities section, which is the hands shaking. And you're going to create an opportunity. So think of an opportunity as an opportunity to make money. So an opportunity to transact. Um, so you have both listing opportunities and buying opportunities. So you would create the opportunity that is applicable if it's an opportunity to list something or an opportunity to work with a buyer. Um, this pipeline here kind of shows how a listing or buyer would move through the phases. So first you would cultivate it. You know that they might sell or they might buy. Then you book the appointment and you move them through to appointment. And then it becomes either an active listing or active buyer. This is when it gets to active, that's when you're going to start having paperwork. When you're cultivating them and have an appointment, there's not going to be paperwork yet. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into that. That's not the purpose of today's class. Um, but just know that's what this pipeline is. It's calculating your commissions over here based on what's in your pipeline and where they are in the pipeline. So I have... I don't actually sell. So all these numbers are all fake. I don't have 19 people I'm cultivating. I don't have 13 appointments and 29 active listings. That's just for me training and making these. <laughs> but um, with the money that are in these opportunities, so I'm putting in the potential sales price and the commission amount, it's telling me over here what income I have. So if everything in my pipeline closes, I'll be making $300,000. And I will probably close 185,000 just because of where they are in the pipeline. As things move through the pipeline, the more likely they are to close, the more likely I am to get paid. Does that make sense? Okay, that's all I'm gonna say to that. That's not the point of today, but it just, I like to explain that because we're here. So I'm just gonna go into create opportunity. Um, everybody on this call only belongs to one market center. So you're never going to change this. Uh, if you're on a team, you would select your team. If you're an individual agent, this will be grayed out. Um, opportunity type. This is where you choose if it's a listing or a buyer. And please choose correctly because it is important. <laughs> the owner of the opportunity, uh, if you're an individual agent, is always going to be you. If you're on a team, um, that depends on you and your team and how you what you guys have determined. If it's a lead from your team leader, maybe they own it. If it's your lead, maybe you own it. Again, up to you and your team how that works. Client. So you do need to have a client in your database. Uh, you can add them here. So I'm going to choose Angela as my seller. So she's already in my database in my contacts over here. So when I start typing her name, I can just click on her. Uh, you can put two people if you have two people selling the house. Um, so let's say I, let's say Ben was also selling the same property, but he's not in my contacts yet. He is, but if he wasn't, I could click add new contact and add him here. Okay. So you don't have to start in contacts if, uh, if it doesn't already exist. The opportunity name. We find it most clear if, um, you use the property address. Now, of course, if you're working with a buyer, you don't know the property address yet until you have an accepted offer, but you can change that at any time. Custom tags is just something to help you with filtering and sorting. You don't have to use them. Estimated closing date. We do ask you to fill this in when you know the closing date of the transaction. When you're starting this, you probably don't know, right? If you're taking a listing, you don't know when it's going to close. Well, let's say I know this is closing May 22nd. I'm going to fill that in. Estimated listing price. Um, you don't have to fill this in, but this commission over here can't calculate if it doesn't know 
money, if it doesn't know value, right? So for submitting paperwork, we don't need this, but if you're using the pipeline, how it's intended to be a pipeline, you do need to fill that in. You do need to put in a commission rate and you can always change it down the road. If it changes, when you start working with a buyer, you're going to always hope you're getting 2.5%, but maybe the property you end up getting accepted offer with is only cooperating with 2%. So it could change. It can be changed later. It's fine. Just put something in here at the beginning. And then where in the pipeline is this opportunity going? Is this a listing we're cultivating? Do we have a listing appointment or is it an active listing? Um, this does not matter for submitting paperwork to the office. Um, but it, again, if you're using your pipeline properly, that does matter. So I'm gonna put it into active listing. And then assignee is also only if you're on a team, uh, who on the team is assigned to this opportunity? You may add a few people, you may add an administrator, you may, if you're going on vacation, you may add another person who's watching it while you're gone, something like that. So now we're just going to create this opportunity. So now that we're in here, it's uh, just showing me the details that I've put in. Uh, I can click this pencil and edit it at any point. Um, so like I said, where was the commission rate? Maybe it ends up being, maybe I go on the listing appointment, I end up signing it on for 2%. I can change that, no problem. So we're gonna go to the documents tab. This is where we submit paperwork. So when you go to documents, you're going to choose a checklist type. This is also very important. So it was very important that we chose listing properly instead of buyer, and now this is also important. For everybody, all everyone on this call is in Nova Scotia. So your two options are standard individual consumer and standard corporate consumer. The reason that they're different is for FinTrack purposes. Um, the list of what needs to be submitted is very different if you're dealing with Ben Park or if you're dealing with 123 Nova Scotia Limited. So that's why they're different. It changes what needs to be submitted. So let's just go to an individual consumer. So this is just a person. Joe Smith is listing his house, okay? So when we do that, it generates a checklist. So with every listing, you will be submitting with, uh, working with a realtor. You'll be submitting a seller's designated brokerage agreement, an input form, um, your FinTrack. There might be one or two FinTracks or three or four, depending on how many sellers there are. Your politically exposed person, your listing cut, your property disclosure statement. So this is just the list of things that you may need to provide to the office. So very easily, you just attach documents to these items, okay? These are just like slots that you're gonna put the documents in essentially. So if I want to upload from my computer, I'm gonna click here to browse. Uh, I just downloaded some documents. So here's a WWR. I'm going to put that there. And now I've got an SDBA. I'm going to put that there. Okay. Very simple, literally just attaching. Just no different than attaching a document to an email. You can drag to if it's, if you have it in your downloads up here, you could drag. I don't know if I, I don't have any PDFs in my recent downloads, but I could drag it down and put it there if it was a PDF. Very simple, okay? Everybody good so far? Stop me at any point if you have questions. Okay, good. Okay. So now once I've uploaded everything I need to upload, I'm going to click Submit to MC. So MC stands for Market Center, that's the office. Um, think of it like an email. You could attach documents to an email, but if you don't click Send, they're not going anywhere. So you have to click Submit. It's the same as clicking Send on an email, okay? So now that's in the queue. It now um, this is a listing, so it is in Alicia's queue for her to process the listing. Quick question. Yeah. So let's say that uh, I submitted all the 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 main paperwork, and then there was an amendment, so I added that. Yeah. And then I added something else. When I resubmit to the market center, is it sending everything or just the new one I just changed? They can tell what's new and what's old. Oh, okay, yeah. good. So their view is extremely, it's pretty much the same as yours. They come in, they see the same list, they see what's attached. 
they're going to click on it, open it up, look at it. Yeah, they see the same thing as you. Um, so we've submitted that. So now it's in the office's hand. So I'm just going to go on my other screen for one second and go through it as if the office was going through it. Okay, so I just uh, went through at, on the office side. So now I'm back to you, to the agent. It's on two different screens, so you don't get confused. You don't need to see the office side. <laughs> so this one was returned by the office, which would have prompted an email to you telling you why it was returned. Uh, it lists the items. So when I come in, it says, the working with the realtor was returned. It's red, bold, hard to miss. You know it needs addressed, right? So it, they write the reason why they reject the document right here. So it says it's not signed. We submitted a document that wasn't signed by anybody. So we need the signed version, obviously. Um, they didn't say anything about the SDBA. So that means it's okay from the administrator's point of view. Further down the road, the brokers will, will, will review it and they will click approved and approve the document. The brokers are the only ones that approve things uh, that are signed by clients. Fintracks and things like that, the admin will approve, but contracts are only approved by brokers. And the office also marked the input form and the Fintrack as missing. Okay. So that means we require that paperwork. You need to submit it to us. Make sense? All right, so I'm going to jump gears quickly. I'm going to move over to DocuSign. Oh, what, one question before we go move forward. Yeah. Um, can we just uh, add this like one by one or do you have to normally like upload it at the same time? Because I see that two are missing. Is that yep. okay to be missing like that? Um, like you update it the day after or the, like in a few it, days or something? It depends on what it is. Okay. So with a listing, um, if you want your listing on MLS, we need the working with the realtor, the SDBA, because that's your listing contract. Mm -hmm. And we need the input form. We can't put it on MLS with yeah. input yeah. form, right? So this is like, no, those three need to be submitted together because we can't do anything without an input form, right? Right. Whereas what, what the I'm saying track, is like, if I get the papers done like in like two days, yeah. Difference. Like, can I upload it? Yeah, you certainly it? can. Okay. And so you also, okay. so let's say you have the working with the realtor and the SDBA done, but yeah. you haven't gone to the house to measure it and all that right. stuff. So you don't have an input form yet. Right. You can upload these and just not click submit. Oh, uh, right? okay. Okay. So I'll just leave it there until Again, I get all the forms. It's up to yeah. you. There is a chat here. So if I submitted this and I don't have my input form yet, you could mm -hmm. always just, Alicia is the one who does listings. So you could say, Alicia, I know my input form is missing. Mm. I'll have it in a few days, right? And you okay. could tell her that. So she's okay. not like, why are you sending me this without an input form? I can't do anything. Mm. Or yeah. you can wait and upload it all when you're ready to submit it. It doesn't right. matter. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to switch gears and go to DocuSign for a minute. DocuSign is how we get electronic signatures. So from this screen, so I'm on the Documents tab. If I click Start a Transaction, it's going to open a new tab, open up DocuSign, and create what's called a room. So a room is like the same thing as an opportunity. It's just in DocuSign, not in Command. That's where all your paperwork for signatures will be for this listing. So it's already named it as 123 Main Street. Okay. So it took the name. I named my opportunity 123 Main Street. So when it created the room in DocuSign, it also named it 123 Main Street. It keeps it pretty simple for you. So if I need to send my documents for signature, as we do, <laughs> I'm going to send it through DocuSign likely. Of course, you can get it signed in person, but nine times out of 10, it's going to be through DocuSign. So to do that, 
you go into envelopes and we're gonna add our paperwork. So I'm creating an envelope. So if you think of DocuSign like real mail, like Canada Post Mail, you can't put anything in the mail without putting in an envelope. If you were sending contracts mm -hmm. to your clients in the mail to sign, if it was 1950, you couldn't just put the contract in the mail. You got to put it in an envelope, address the envelope, right? So just think of think of that. So let me upload a document here for signature. Um, and then I'm going to put my client's name. Let me do... I'll do my personal. Uh, I can upload many documents. So if I... Obviously, you're going to have more than one document, nine times out of 10. So you're going to upload all of these. Um, don't forget to add yourself. You, as the agent, need to sign documents as well. So if you need to sign, you need to put yourself in here. So it's a little confusing because I'm doing myself as the client and the, here, let me put a different name. So Angela is the client. I'm the agent. Okay. And then you can write a message here. Hi, Angela. Here's the listing documents we've discussed. Let me know if you have any questions, blah, 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 whatever you're going to say. We're going to go to next. And here's where I have to say where the clients are signing. Okay. So Angela needs to, my client needs to initial here. I'm going to put an initial box. You'll see right here, this says Angela Curran. I can change the drop down to Aaron Malcolm and it's a different color. So if it's yellow, it's for Angela. If it's blue, it's for Aaron. Okay. You're always going to add your date signed next to every initial and signature. So down here, I need Angela to sign now instead of initial. So I'm going to add signature and again, date signed. This document. Again, we need initials all throughout with a date. Um, little tip, you can, I'm clicking and dragging to highlight both of these fields. See, they're both highlighted now. On my keyboard, I'm pressing Control C for copy. So now when I go to the next page and I need the exact same thing, when I do Control V for paste, it's putting them there. I don't have to click them over every single time. Okay, because I know on the on the SDBA it, that's needed in the same spot on every page. So I'm just saving myself a minute. So I need my seller to sign here with the date and I need to sign as the agent. So I need to change the drop down to me and put my signature and date. Okay. I thought I thought the only you only needed the date signed when it was the signature, not the initial. No, you need it on the initial as well. Okay. It's unfortunate because it makes it very squishy, but it is when you're using electronic signatures, it is required. Okay. All right. So now I would send this over. I'm gonna do some signing on my phone. While you're signing, yep. this I wish I had seen two weeks ago. <laughs> so <laughs> I did it through web forms and used um, DocuSign in there. This is so much more streamlined. Yeah. Like I was that confused bouncing all over the place that now I know I can just create the transaction add all my documents and I can do it all right here. Yeah. Oh, this is it, um, there is a million ways how to use DocuSign. I'm showing you one way. This is perfect. This makes it so much more straightforward. Good. Glad it's helping. So I'm I'm I sent all of it to me, some to my um, personal email as the client, and 
some to my work email as the agent, so just bear with me. And so just so you guys know, if you've never been on the receiving end of this, you the clients aren't dating. When they click is what gets dated. Okay. Okay, so I just finished that. So I would have, I'll get an email telling me that it's complete. So will the client because they need a copy of their fully executed contract. So they get an email saying it's completed as well. So now if I just refresh this here, it, that will no longer say needs my signature, it'll say completed. So if I go into the documents tab, I now have these documents. If I look at them, let me refresh. There we go. The ones with the green check marks are completed and we'll have the signatures on them. So there's my AC for Angela Curran and her signature and the dates are just going in there based on when I was clicking, that's all. And then same thing here. They're all loaded and all the signatures there. There is one thing you will notice is time zones. It is a pain point. So my signature was dated cor timed correctly for where we are. Angela's was not. Angela's was in Eastern. It's something that's not an easy fix. It's unfortunately your client would have to go into their settings and adjust their time zone. And that's just, un it's not realistic. You're not going to have every client go in and do it. They don't even know how to log into DocuSign. They get an email that they just click open and they click through their signatures. They don't even know how to log in. So just, it's one of those things. It's just not worth the battle. Just 922 Eastern is the same as 1022 Atlantic, right? Just unfortunately, it's a downside to DocuSign, but anyway. So now that we've got some documents in here, I, because of my OCD, would delete the ones that aren't signed or archive them one or the other just to get them out of my way so I'm never clicking the unsigned versions. So the two that aren't, you can easily tell with the green, right? That those ones are good, so I'm not archiving those, but I'm gonna archive the originals that were uploaded without signatures. That, you don't have to do that. That's just something that I would do. This document here is the certificate um, for the signatures. So this is automatically generated every time an envelope is completed, and it shows all the details, like their IP address, the date and time, everything was done. So if you forget to add the timestamps when you're making the document, you'll just have to submit this certificate as proof with the document. So it's fine if you forget, you'll just have to submit this certificate, okay? So I'm gonna go back to command. This session is about submitting paperwork to the office. I'm just going to refresh here. So previously, in my first example, I uploaded these documents from the computer. But if you're using DocuSign the way I just showed you, you can also add your documents directly from DocuSign. So now that I have these signed documents in DocuSign, I don't have to download them to my computer, go over to command and upload it to command. That's time consuming. And now you got all these files on your computer that aren't needed and just a mess. So, Back in this opportunity, uh, in the list of documents that are needed, I can choose to attach files from DocuSign and in my room docs. That's going to always default that way. So now I can here, I have those three documents. So this is part of the reason why I remove those two that aren't signed. So it's not in my list here. I know that this is the wrong place, but I got a WWR signed. So I would easily just click and add that. Now the WWR is missing from the list because I've already used it. I don't need to add it to the checklist twice, okay? Obviously this should be an input form. I just didn't do an input form in DocuSign. Does that make sense? Angela looks excited. Oh, I just, if I'd have known this, 
three weeks ago because I yeah. was bringing everything in from everywhere. Just like you said, I yeah. filed everywhere. But the seller designated brokerage, you have that now signed. Yeah. So can you just replace it? Like click yeah. update? Update. And so oh now this is the signed version. I can choose from DocuSign. If it's on my computer, I can switch this back to computer, whatever it may be. Okay. Oh, great. Update that. So yeah, in theory, I should have just updated the WWR that was flagged as not signed. Update it with the signed version. So you can see these now say updated. This did say returned and this did say uploaded. Okay. Everybody good with that? Remember, every time you change something, click resubmit to MC. If you don't click send on an email, it's not going to go. If you don't click submit to MC, it's not going to go. Okay. Um, so a few features I just want to talk about. I mentioned quickly this add comment is like a chat. Um, so if you click at or if you type at, it's going to list all the brokers administrators, and if you're on a team, the people attached to this opportunity. So if I need to say something to Alicia about the listing, I would click at and click on Alicia's name. If Margaret Hines is reviewing my file and she writes me a message in here, if she says at Angela, um, please acknowledge this for the future, blah, 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 whatever she may have said, when I reply, I'm going to do at Margaret. That um, that initiates a notification up here. If you don't at mention them, they don't get a notification, so it might get missed. So the at and tagging people is important. Okay. Um, so this was a listing. This is listing documents, and not all of these documents are are needed. Obviously, so like. Um, if there's no power of attorney or will, like obviously there's nothing to upload here, it's fine. Just because it's listed here doesn't mean it has to be filled with something. Uh, if there is something else you needed to add that's not in the list. So for example, we put two placeholders for amendments. If you have a third amendment, you can add one. You just click these three dots here and say add document. Document name might be amendment number three, or it might be price change, or it might be whatever you want to name it. It really doesn't matter. Document type doesn't matter. I always click addendum. If you wanted to add a note, you can. And then where am I adding the document from? So if this certificate was my amendment, I can attach it. Or I can upload it from my computer. So that just adds it to the bottom of the list. As in, just if, because we can't think of everything, we can't, Right, it can't be every single situation can't fit this checklist. So if there's something else that needs added, you can easily add it like that, okay? So this was the listing. So eventually, hopefully, we get an accepted offer on the listing. So you just move to under contract and this checklist changes. And now it's your agreement of purchase and sale, counter offer, foreign buyer schedule, trade record sheet, all of the things. So your listing documents are in the listed portion and your sale documents are in the under contract portion. Make sense? Okay, so we have this listing, we get an accepted offer, we attach documents. Let me just put some documents on here. I know that they're not the correct ones. Let me just do that. So we're working on this offer um, and then the buyers can't get the funding and it falls. So our listing goes back. We upload our termination down here. There's a termination spot. Hopefully this doesn't happen, but you know, it does. We add our termination. Our listing goes back to active. We get a new accepted offer. We don't need to re recreate the opportunity because the listing is the same. It's the same listing opportunity. The listing documents haven't changed. All you have to do is go to your under contract portion right here. You can click add version. It defaults to under contract version two. You can change that to whatever. Maybe it's um, maybe the new buyers are called the are named the McDonald's, and that keeps you straight. That helps you keep it straight. Which one you're working on? McDonald's offer, maybe. Now our checklist is blank again. It's fresh, Daisy. Nothing's 
here the old fallen agreement is gone. It's not gone because you can go back to your original and here's that first one that fell and here's the new, the second offer, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? That's something people often forget um, because it's not something you do every single time. But if this at least reminds you to think of, oh, there's something I'm supposed to do if the offer falls, because we don't want you making a new opportunity that's wasting your time. Um, you have to re-upload all the listing documents and it's just unnecessary. Um, what else do I wanna show you? There's a spot here for custom folders. You can use those if you wish. Uh, some people, especially on Teams, will put like marketing materials in here so that anyone on the team can come in and get a flyer or whatever it may be. If you put things over here, the admin staff aren't gonna look at them. They're just looking at this checklist. Uh, so don't, if you're putting things over here, make sure it's not something that the admin teams need. You can use it to keep yourself organized and put extra things. Uh, but it's not going to be reviewed by the office. Um, another thing I would like to point out, which is DocuSign related. So this is your listing. You receive a offer from a buyer's agent. You put it in DocuSign, you send it to your sellers. It's signed in your DocuSign, right? But let's say you created a counter so the counter is signed by your sellers. You have to send it to the buyer's agent to get it signed by their buyers. That buyer's agent is going to email it back to you. So now the fully signed version is in your email and not in DocuSign. Following? A really quick, easy step in DocuSign. If you go to inbox, you're going to have this email address here. So Let's say you now have fully signed documents in your email account and not in DocuSign. You can forward that email to this email address. It's always gonna be the same and it likely will just be your first name dot last name at mail.docusign.net. But if you go to your inbox, it will show it to you. If you email it there, it's going, those documents will come into your inbox and you can move it to your DocuSign. You don't have to do this step. Some people just like everything to be in their DocuSign and then you can easily attach it to the checklist in your command. Um, it's totally up to you. It's just an extra tip. Uh, an extra tip on top of that. So if you email to that email address, it's going to come into your inbox. Each room in your DocuSign, so this room that we're working on is called 123 Main Street, has an ID number. If you make the subject line of the email, the ID number, instead of the documents being sent to your inbox, it will go directly into your documents in the room. Ben, you look confused. You good? Do you want me to show you an example? Would that help? Just don't judge my emails. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let's use this as an example because it's got attachments here. So this, you wouldn't do this in this case because this actually came from DocuSign. So it's already in DocuSign. I'm just, it's a document you guys can see. <laughs> so I'm going to forward this email to, what's my email address? Just going to copy this. But I'm going to change the subject line. So if you use Gmail, you just click here and you can click edit subject. And when I go to my room, this is the ID number. So I'm going to copy that. And change you the need subject the number line. Sign? Yes, you need the hashtag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to send. Before I click send, let me just remind you what my documents looks like currently. I have the signed version of the WWR, SDBA, and my certificate. Now, when I send this, it's gonna, it takes a minute. So I'll just have to refresh a few times. Those documents that were attached are just going to appear here. So just think when you're dealing with the other agent, they're going to send you documents, 
right? And now they're in your email, not in your DocuSign. You can just forward it and it comes here. It takes a little bit to come through. It's not as fast as some would like. Anyway, that, uh, it does work. It just takes a minute. This happened all the time on what I was working on. So I can't yeah. get to sign documents in my email. Yeah, so of I course you are. Because on my desktop and moving them yeah. around and trying to get, yeah. and I could have did this. <laughs> yeah. And of course, like when you think about the logistics of it, you're, the docu the buyer's agent or the agent on the other side isn't going to put it in DocuSign to send it to you. That doesn't make sense, right? They're just going to email it to you once it's once they have their client signatures. Anyway, I promise that this does work. I'm not yeah. going to sit here and refresh all day. Um, and then they will be in your room to attach the documents, right? So you can just easily attach them from here. Um, any questions? Uh, I do have a question, not about this, but uploading documents. Yeah. So I know that uh, administrator and the broker needs to um, check documents before mm -hmm. it's, you know, approved. But do we need to sign before that? Like, if do I need to get the signature after I get all checked? Yeah. So here, we only want fully executed documents. Okay. So we only want accepted offer. Like, we don't need... Sometimes an agent will send us, if you are working with a buyer, you offer on a listing, but you lose, someone else wins or or you just can't agree. We don't need that offer. So that doesn't need to come here. And we only need fully signed documents. As a brand new agent, it's a great idea to have a conversation with either your mentor, well, your mentor, ideally, you should be going through paperwork before sending it to your clients, have your mentor look over it to make sure it's correct before it's getting signed. Um, but as for this, this is only for accepted, like listing agreements that are going ahead, accepted offers, things like that, and fully signed versions. Mm -hmm. As a new agent, before you're getting your signatures from clients, you can send it to your mentor for review. Okay. Okay. Um, one other thing I wanted to note in here is if you click these three dots, there is a split and attach PDF option. Um, so there are times, especially if you're dealing with like condos or something like that, that you might get an email, like you might get a document from someone that is four documents combined into one document, right? So you just split, you can click it here. Uh, you can, again, upload a, the document from your computer or get it out of your DocuSign, whichever. And then let me just, again, this doesn't make sense, but when you attach the document, you're now going to say, okay, pay for the APS, that's actually pages one and two. And I'm just gonna name it APS. And then pages three to four are, counter offer maybe, and I'll name that counter. So you can do that right in here. You There are many programs, if you, if you Google split PDF, there's a thousand websites that'll do it for you, but you can do it right in here as well. So this okay. is a great example because when I received the um, signed offer, mm -hmm. they included the foreign buyer schedule. They, so they had all these documents. So yeah. I didn't realize, and I just uploaded the one document mm -hmm. and they came back and asked me said that the foreign buyer wasn't there and I'm right. like yeah but it is I put it in the, in the like so when they look at the APS they're going one two three four pages one two right. three four and they stop scrolling right, right? so yeah. now I can see how easily even if I get combined documents I could just go in split them put them in the right spot and it yeah. makes it simpler for them to review right yeah. oh yeah yeah. So just a few little, and so, yeah, if I finish that, that will attach them here. Right. Um, 
I'm trying to think of any other tips because there's a million things that are going to come up. Oh, one other thing that does come up from time to time. If you double end a deal. So if you have a listing and then you end up representing the buyer for that listing, that is two different opportunities. So you do need a listing opportunity and a buying opportunity. Uh, it is a little annoying because you have to upload the same agreement of purchase and sale to both opportunities, but just because each opportunity is a unit, think of it that way. You get one unit per listing, one unit per buyer, right? Um, let me go in, I'm just gonna quickly create a buyer opportunity. Angela, you can be my buyer as well. So I just wanna point out um, the checklist types for buyers. So again, the same two, individual consumer for a person as your client, corporate consumer for a business as your client. But down here, we do also have a FISBO, which stands for for sale by owner. Um, so if you're working with a buyer and you end up buying a for sale by owner property, you would use this checklist because again, the documents that are required when you're doing that type of a deal are totally different. So we just have its own checklist to help guide you through which paperwork is required. Because you'll end up having documents for the seller, even though you're not their client. So the checklist just changes a lot. Again, that's not a super common occurrence, just wanted to point it out. Any questions? No? Okay. I can't think of, and one other, I guess I can show you, there's an export document uh, button. So if you like to keep it elsewhere, if you want to keep your documents elsewhere, like on your computer or in Google Drive or something like that, you can export all the documents. I would suggest waiting till everything's done. Um, then you can export maybe when the deal closes, maybe that's part of your workflow. You want to keep everything in Google Drive. You can export everything and save it wherever you want to save it. But it does stay in here, right? Yeah, it stays in here. Okay. Erin, this is one of the best courses I've been on. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no questions, that's all I have. Well, you have a great weekend and thank you so much again. This was really valuable. Good, good. Love that. I'm glad yeah, I recorded it. Thank you it. very much. Yeah, no weekend. worries. You too, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.